Texas wins uh, a postseason game for the first time since the Mac Brown era, defeating Mizzou 33 to 16. We're joined by Steve Helwick, who's joined us a number of times from Hustle Belt to talk Mac football. But uh, Steve joining us from the University of Texas uh, uh, on campus television station. Steve, we appreciate you jumping on board directly from NRG Stadium, uh, home of the Texas Bowl, as the Longhorns win this game. So, despite all the personnel losses, and we discussed this last week, uh, you have to be mighty impressed uh, with the performance. Definitely. This seemed to be a new Texas team we saw. They looked better than they had all season, but a lot of the things were the same. The defense was incredible all season long, led by Brecken Hager tonight, wearing number 60 in honor of former Texas great Tommy Novus. And he played like a Texas great tonight. He was getting pressure. He was get, getting to the quarterback, Drew Locke, and Missouri couldn't get the offense. But I think the defense uh, owes a big-time thank you to punter Michael Dixon. How often do you get to see a punter win MVP of a bowl game? Michael Dixon had 11 punts, and 10 of them went inside the Mizzou 14-yard line. Missouri, every single possession seemed to be just having to go the whole distance of the field to get down, and that really took away this Mizzou offense that's been averaging 40 points a game in the second half, second stretch of the season. They've won six straight, and you couldn't even tell Drew Locke in this Mizzou offense was the best in the SEC tonight. Texas's defense was that good. They forced four turnovers. Three of them were fumbles. They were constantly getting tackles, ripping the ball out. And they scored nine points defensively. They had the touchdown with Anthony Wheeler getting the scoop and score in the first half. And then there, was a, there were a lot of Texas fans here. I was just at Tom Herman's press conference. He credited those fans for forcing that safety in the second half to make it 23-16. to 16. That was a real turning point because Missouri could have gone up with a touchdown. There was a safety that went over Drew Locke's head. Texas got the ball back, got three more points, made it a two-possession game. So the defense and the special teams with Michael Dixon getting those 10 punts inside the 14-yard line. And another thing about Michael Dixon was he was just one of the players at the press conference. He is so good at punting, Ray Guy Award winner, that he's actually leaving college early, junior year, to go to the NFL. He is that good, and we got to see it in this final collegiate game tonight. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable. You don't hear that very often. I know, especially with a punter. And Texas's defense, they just look good. Even without their best two players, All-American Deshaun Elliott, who is a Jim Thorpe finalist, and Malik Jefferson from the inside linebacker position. Both of them were out tonight, but it was a next-man-up type thing. I, I mentioned Brecken Hager, some of the other linebackers. Edwin Freeman and Anthony Wheeler looked really good forcing turnovers. The secondary, Devontae Davis got a late interception to end any Mizzou hope of winning the game. The defense was great tonight, and the offense... The offense did what it had to. They scored two possessions. They scored on their first possession to go up 7 nothing. start out hot. Running back Daniel Young looked really good in the receiving game, had over 60 yards there, over 100 all-purpose yards. And Texas's offense just did enough of what they needed to do. Sam Ellinger played quarterback for most of the game. They switched in the first half a little before Shane Bouchel hurt his groin before the second half. But... I think there's a lot of promise with Tom Herman and this Longhorns team going forward. You look at their losses in 2016, four of them are to, I think, top 20 teams in the nation, USC, Oklahoma, TCU, Oklahoma State, and they were all narrow losses. You can see this team maybe even returning to what we saw at the end, before the end of the Mac Brown era. I don't know if Big 12 title yet in play, but you can definitely see a lot of promise. There's a lot of young talent, and Tom Herman's recruiting at a good rate, and we saw I think a start of something with Tom Herman's era tonight that was really important. Hey, Steve, before we let you go, Ellinger and Bouchel pretty much split time. You mentioned uh, 15 and 14 pass attempts for a total of 29. Neither one of them lit up the world, but they took care of the football. Uh, just your thoughts about watching it from the sideline and their performances, and also based on what Tom and Herman said after the game, your thoughts about uh, maybe who has the edge going into spring ball. Well, I think Sam Ellinger has the higher ceiling right now, but he also has a lower floor. He's a freshman. He made a couple mistakes in games, uh, late game fumble against USC, threw picks to cost the Oklahoma State and Texas Tech game. But then again, with Sam Ellinger, you're getting somebody who has more, more confident player out on the field. He has a great arm, great running ability too. We saw some of that tonight. He has escape ability. Shane Bouchel, though, Bouchel's reliable. He has some of more of that veteran experience. The injury tonight, we got to see less of Shane Bouchel, but you could see Bouchel come in, and he worked the offense right away, got a touchdown. 
So I think Texas, it's not to the degree of Ohio State uh, in 2015, but they have one of those Ohio State problems of having multiple good quarterbacks on the team that aren't transferring, that are staying there, and they're going to have to make the decision. I know there's an old saying that says if you have two good quarterbacks, you have none. So it is very imperative, I think, that Herman picks one. And right now I think Ellinger would have the edge. The coaches seem very eager to play Ellinger early in the season. I know Bouchelle got a little banged up in the first game, and Ellinger looked really good in his debut and continued that throughout the season. When you have Ellinger on the team, you have a dynamic player. You have a very vocal leader, and he was born to play on the big stage from Austin, grew up a Texas Longhorns fan. He's been dreaming of this his whole life. I think the coaches will stick with Ellinger, but this will not be the last we see of Shane Bouchelle in college football. Maybe the last in Austin, who knows, but Bouchelle will definitely be starting for a college football team two years from now. So when what Vegas pegged as a three-point margin in Mizzou's favor, Texas comes out, scores the first uh, 14 points of the game, goes up 14 to nothing, and holds on for the victory at 33 to 16. Fends off a comeback that uh, uh, Drew Locke had led to within 21 to 16, but behind uh, just the tremendous uh, punting and special teams play in the defense, holding strong against one of the formidable passing attacks in college football. Steve Helwick joining us uh, directly from. NRG Stadium in Houston to give us the recap on Texas's big win over Mizzou at the Texas Bowl. Steve, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much, Mark. 